You guys really gonna allow that? The guy that shows up last takes, gets the first question. Go ahead, Coach. Tell, tell us Thank about you. the rim issue. And how did it Jeez. come to your attention? What happened? Give us the breakdown. Yeah, that was like a buzzkill, man. Um, I guess what well, the referees came over and said somebody was uh, hung on the rim, and they had to check to see if it was legal level and all that. I wish they would have just changed the, the rim right away. You know, it took a, uh, there's a joke in there somewhere. I mean, how many guys does it take to fix a rim in an NBA game? But um, they were finally able to get it done, put some time on the clock for guys to get warmed up. I was really worried. You know, you're up 13 points with 6.43 to go. And is this going to kill our momentum? You know, how are we going to respond from a really long break? And um, it's unfortunate for us and Boston, obviously, but, um, we handled it, and we were able to get a hell of a win against a very good basketball team. Coach, uh, the outcome of these games, uh, between this one and the first one you guys played against Boston, was very different. What was the biggest difference that you saw in, uh, in the team tonight? Uh, I think, you know, as I mentioned pregame, you know, like, what's the key? I thought the energy. I thought our guys were ready to play tonight. I thought we got off to a great start. Um, I, I felt our defense, for the most part, against the number one offense in the NBA was really good. And most importantly within that, the three-point defense. You know, that team is second in makes and attempts per game and seventh in percentage. And tonight they were nine for 33, 27%. Um, Jason Tatum is an all-MVP player, and he's going to be an MVP uh, finalist. And I thought Aaron Gordon and the rest of our guys, aside from putting him on the foul line, I thought we did a really good job of guarding Jason Tatum. He was 7 of 16 from the field, 0 of 4 from 3. Um, so it's always going to be defense for us. I think the defense was pretty good tonight. 31 assists once again. Um, shot the ball, lights out, made 17 threes. Uh, and got contributions from a lot of players. So uh, there was, I think the defense was probably the biggest difference in the outcome. Mentioned the shots that fell tonight, but it seemed like your offensive process against such a good defense was really effective. What was it that was so effective about your offensive process? You know, going into the game, you know, that's always my biggest concern playing them. You know, uh, can we score? Can we can we get off a good shot? Because obviously they're they're a very good defensive team. They switch a lot. And if you notice throughout the game, they, they really put some funky matchups out there. And you know, how do we respond to that? So we, we went through it this afternoon. But at the end of the day, you have to stay true to yourself. You know, we have to play Nuggets basketball. We have to play through Nicole Jokic, knowing he's going to make the right play. Uh, another triple-double for him. Um, and, and I felt just the ball movement. Against a really good team, the ball can't stick. If you create an advantage, if you create separation, you have to take advantage of that uh, separation you have created. And that's where I think, you know, to go 17 of 30 from three, uh, a lot of those were high-quality looks, and guys stepped up and, uh, and, and made them, which was, uh, which was obviously a big part of us getting this win today. To follow up a part of that, you talked about kind of hitting first. For years now, you talked about not being reactive. This season, especially the past couple of weeks, it seems like you guys are throwing the first punch. What has changed in that approach? How are you guys getting that kind of fight early in games off there? Well, I think it was just a discussion as we were in the middle of uh, maybe December. And... Uh, you know, you look at the rankings, which I often do, and you're ranked 28th in defensive efficiency. That's embarrassing. It's embarrassing for us. It's embarrassing for me. I'm not doing my job. The players in that locker room are not doing their job. We're too good to be 28th in defensive efficiency. Can we be number one? I don't know. But I know we can't be 28th. And I think now we're, I think, 10-2 and two in our last 12 games. And within that stretch, we're probably around 10th in defensive uh, efficiency. There is no secret between the correlation between defense and winning. Yeah, everybody can talk about pace and this and that. Defense wins. And I think our guys have had enough of it and me talking about it. You know, when are we going to guard for 48 minutes? And we still have so much room to grow on that end of the floor. But obviously, it's been really fun to see the defense rise up to not only go 10 and 2 in your last 12, but to beat some really good teams within that stretch. We have been tested, and I think we've done a pretty good job within that. Speaking on that, when you talk about defense, you look at Christian Brown, who plays 25 minutes, one for one, two rebounds. Like, well, how's a guy with those numbers staying for 25 minutes? But I thought defensively, I thought he was outstanding most of his game. You know, uh, I just told him this. One of my favorite plays, if not the favorite play of the night, was a winning play by Christian Brown in transition. Zeke had one in the first half, getting back on Jalen Brown. Hell of a play, not giving up. And then Christian had one in front of our bench where Jason Tatum looks like he's going to have a transition layup. 
And Christian, he doesn't know any better. That's what I love about him. He sprints back. That's, he's wired that way. He's a winner. He's a, a guy's won in high school. He's won in, uh, in college, and he's going to win in the NBA. And that winning play of getting back and taking away two transition points, who knows? Maybe that's the difference. Tatum sees it go in. He goes on a roll. Simple, like little plays like that can have a huge impact. So I agree with you. It's not always about the stat line. It's about your impact. And, uh, and Christian was impactful tonight. You mentioned Zeke in his play there. Uh, this is, I think, third or fourth game where there's been promising results. Was he coming off the bench in that unit? Do you feel like a little bit of momentum with that bench unit? And what was the decision to bring AG into that unit as well? Well, uh, with the, I'll go with your last question first. With AG, we're just, just trying to maybe mirror his minutes with Tatum a little bit. You know, uh, they, they get him out probably around the six, seven minute mark of the first and third and bring him back to close and start the next quarter. And I just felt, you know, he's their ace and let's put our ace defender on him. Um, and then, yeah, I think Zeke has been, you know, well, something happened. I don't know, is, it, is that the Steeler game? Maybe that's the Steeler game. Yes, yeah, I know. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> wow, shots, shots fired. Just because you don't get the first question, you can take his book bag and sit on the side. <laughs> um, but, but you know what? I, I felt the bench unit tonight, like, was good. And I think Vlatko has been a big part of that as well. I think Vlatko, you can see, he's kind of like a glue guy. He's a connector. He's been shooting the ball really well. And uh, when they go to that second lineup, they just switch everything. I knew it was going to be hard to score, so hey, we got to get stops. And I felt that unit was able to do that for stretches tonight. So uh, yeah, Zeke has been good, and I think that unit is kind of getting a little bit more comfortable and a little bit more consistency on the floor. Do you see some chemistry between Michael Porter and Nicole Jokic? It seems like since he's come back, they've had some nice stretches together. Yeah, and it's funny, even before Michael had gotten hurt, I felt that those two and the two-man game of playing off of each other and with each other was really growing. And now that he's back, I think, I mean, think about it. If you're Michael Porter or any other player, I'm going to pass the ball to that guy and I'm going to cut. And Michael had a stretch there in that third quarter where he just shot the ball, lights out, was really, really effective. Um, you know, 19 points on 7 to 13 from the field. But, yeah, I, I think Michael and Nicole, that's only going to continue to grow. And, you know, for us to do this without Jamal Murray, you know, is uh, – it makes it even a little bit more impressive because Jamal's such a big part of what we do. But Bruce stepped up in his uh, place, 21 points, um, and we got a lot of contributions from other people as well. So now we're moving on to Minnesota, obviously conference game, division game, and hopefully we're ready for that. Yeah. And no turnovers. No turnovers, which is, which is amazing, especially against that team. I mean, that team is a – they turn people over at a high rate, which fuels their break. Um, I actually said to the players in there, you know, gave uh, Aaron Gordon the defensive player of the game and a few other things, and I said, oh, by the way, Nicola got his, like, 90th triple-double, big deal. Like, and guys were cracking up because we're, we're all becoming so accustomed to it. Um, but I promised myself I will never take Nicola and his greatness for granted. He, he is a phenomenal player, plays the game the right way, and makes everybody around him better. And uh, what, what a joy to coach. All right. So we must have some Steeler fans in the pantry. <laughs> that was the best media session.